Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Listener Ghost Stories. My name is Paul Dosky, and joining us is two lovely ladies that had their own experiences one night on Emily's Bridge. So without further ado, I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to let the guests start talking. So without further ado, let's um, get them introduced to you all before we go diving into the uh, experience of what happened that faithful night of Emily's Bridge. So with us, we have Joe and Ashley Martell, and they both, um, I guess, went to Emily's Bridge last night, and they sound like they had a blast. So, um, Joe, I guess we'll start with you. Um, let's, okay. let's, uh, figure out who are you, Joe? So, you know, like what got you into the paranormal and what led you to go to, uh, Emily Bridge? Uh, what got me into the paranormal was a lot of life experiences. When I was young, our house was haunted. Um, it had, my mom would hear footsteps going up her stairs heavy footsteps and so it was my father but it actually wasn't um it was happening frequent so they had the house blessed so i was told that and then that piqued up my interest uh and then um i don't know just many things uh i was watching shows and it was like interesting hearing about ghosts and stuff and uh yeah that's pretty much how i got started um i love watching paranormal stuff uh, anyway, so the account at the bridge, how that happened was uh, where I used to work, a bunch of people were talking about Emily's Bridge. I'm like, Emily's Bridge? It's Emily's Bridge. And they were telling me, oh, it's a famous haunted bridge in Stowe. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Um, so what's going on with that? And they said, oh, we're going to go investigate. I go, oh, really? Because, you know, turn them with me. And so um, that's what led me to say, hey, can I come along? and the woman I worked with said, yeah, why don't you come along with me? And so uh, I got my daughter to come with me, Ashley. <laughs> and um, we took a ride and got lost. Right, Ash? Yeah. That was silly. <laughs> I remember we stopped at a snack bar because it was the only place we could get cell reception to call yeah. them to find out where the heck we were and where the bridge was. It was a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it was in the middle of the night. <laughs> Because we were meeting late at night, so it was like you know it was dark, and I'm really bad with directions, so I didn't help. And we we ended up meeting at a Cumberland Farms, and then we followed them through the um, the uh, Smuggler's Notch. And I think it was scarier going through the notch than it was going to Emily's Bridge. But it was really weird because when we got there, I thought, what a tiny little bridge! It's like this is haunted, is what came to my mind. I don't know about you, Ash. I never really thought about a bridge being haunted. <laughs> so it was surprising. But, I mean, it, yeah, it is. <laughs> but, yeah, and it was funny because at first I looked at them like, oh, it's so tiny. And then we got out and we, there were some people there already. Remember the, the group of kids that had their, like, candles lit up and they saw us and started packing up? Yeah, I, I know it's a common thing that kids like to, well, they've, historically like to have little seances on the bridge and I, I think yeah, that has brought other things other than Emily onto the bridge which we'll get into later but <laughs> <laughs> exactly um, I know they then, ended up running off when we got there yeah they did and we were with a, a big group of people and um, it was funny too because they were horsing around on the bridge the people we came with uh, they had a recording. Remember that, Ash? That recording that they were playing as a joke? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought that was kind of stupid. And um, right when that happened, uh, me and Ashley and uh, the woman that I was with and her daughter, we heard a big bang on the top of the roof of the uh, the bridge. Remember that, Ash? Oh, oh yeah, that was crashing. <laughs> That was a big, it was so loud and so amplified, it made us all jump and stop. I don't know if, Paul, you wanted to get into this at all? <laughs> well, I many I, experiences. But this is the first experience that we had on. It was that loud crack. And it wasn't like, you know how sometimes when, like, wood settles, it makes, like, a crack? It was, like, amplified, like somebody threw something. But we looked. In fact, that was the first thing we did is we looked 
see if somebody threw a rock, a big rock, which it was impossible because you've been at the bridge, Paul. It's a long distance to the shore, to the side of the river, to the bridge. And this is like yeah. the part, this is like the part where, you know, where the dirt pit is. Off to the it side, right yeah. That, it was on that side, in that corner. And we could not figure out, and it was only one time that that happened. It was only when they were horsing around on the bridge, all of a sudden a big crack. And it just, mm -hmm. everybody just jumped and got quiet. That was weird. That already sounded and weird. It was really weird. Um, did you, just real quick, did you ever figure out what it was? Like, did you ever see anything, find anything? No, we couldn't find anything. We didn't understand. It only happened the one time, and it was just so loud that we were just in shock. And um, I it remember makes a bad it, experience. Like, I know I've seen things the other time we went because we've yeah, been there we twice, to, three times. Three times. Three times. Oh, whoops. Yeah, <laughs> times. Remember one time we dragged Caitlin along, too. That's true. So, Unfortunately, yeah. she's not here, but she saw things, too. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. Uh, she actually saw an apparition in the bridge. She yeah, she was terrified. Saw, she said, she, yeah, she says, that man doesn't like us being here. I go, what man? She's that man in the corner. He does not like us being here. That was a weird experience because that was the night that we sat on the bridge. You shouldn't sit on the bridge because it's an active bridge. Just putting it out there to the public. Uh, the police do come and they actually ask you, what are you doing on the bridge in the middle of the night? Um, but what happened was you're sitting on the bridge. I don't know if Ashley, you remember that. And mm -hmm. you, you, yeah, we were just kind of sitting. And then uh, Ashley and Caitlin were in the like, back side of the, the bridge. And all of a sudden, a little jagged rock bounced three times, and it landed right in front of Caitlin. Oh, yep. <laughs> and, and then we didn't think... And there was nothing on that side of the bridge. There was nothing. We thought it was a little kid at first, but he was sleeping in the car. Because there was a little kid that came with us, but he was tired and fell asleep. And, and then when Caitlin got nervous, and she says, the man really is mad at us. And then all of a sudden, another little jagged rock bounced three times right in front of Caitlin again. And it happened three times, that same, another little jagged rock bouncing right in front of Caitlin. I can't explain that. I don't even know no. where that rock came from. The three different rocks came to her right, right next to her. And I know between those two experiences, the feeling on the bridge was very different. Like, it felt a little more peaceful the first time we'd gone there, but that time it felt really heavy and kind of unsettling. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I remember you saying, too, Ash, that your neck felt heavy and your legs felt heavy. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. my legs. Like, we were I walking mean, like, and like, I know that's like, a feeling I get, like, often when, like, in a haunted location. Like, I can, like, my body can feel that there's something there. So that's mm -hmm. not uncommon, but, like, the feeling will change between, like, if it feels more malicious than other times, you know? Yep. I, I do know that. It feels heavier when it's not friendly. Yeah, you almost get that dread feel on mm -hmm. you. Like, yeah. like, like, I really should not be here. Like, I should just leave. But you try to tell yep. yourself, like, um, but I want to stay just to see what happened. But then, you know, if you get rocks or something thrown at you, maybe that's a sign of a poltergeist or something. Or maybe that could be some sort of, um, you know, I'm not trying to, like, make, a, 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 ex be like, oh, this is this thing. But maybe, you know, we also hear that time, like, there's Sasquatches that can throw rocks and they don't tend to hit you but you know they have pretty good aim but i mean in this case i know this bridge that you like uh, really well and since i went there again it even still felt like the middle of the bridge was colder than just being outside either way of the bridge but i mean um but i guess what i'm trying to say is like you know even though this is going on it's like you know what do you do <laughs> you know where is it coming from what is that sound and i know sometimes uh 
you people will try to see if they can recreate the sound. Did you two mm -hmm. or you three ever try to recreate the sound? It was kind of hard to recreate the banging on top of a roof because it was so, it, it sounded like, like wood cracking. And it was like really. Yeah, and any really rocks loud. that were big enough to really make that noise would have been down in the river, and they're pretty big. So, like, we couldn't throw that up onto the roof. Yeah, there's no way. And it was just that one time. It was only when people got, like, really, like, um, rude and, you know, making fun. That's when it happened. Because they were making fun of the ghost, is what they were doing mm. with their recorder. They had, like, a recording that they made. It was supposed to be funny, which I didn't think was very funny because I like to be respectful to spirits. But they were, like, horsing around, and I never, we never went back with them again. We, we went alone with uh, the woman that I friend with and with uh, Ashley, her friend, and her daughter, the other, the other one's daughter. And, you know, it was a smaller group. So we had a different experience when we were with the smaller group. Like, oh. And I actually... I feel like a lot more happened in the smaller groups. Yes, it did. Especially, like, um, remember the Dark Shadow, Ash? That's like annoying. That <laughs> so, so there was one night that, one of the nights, one of the less crowded nights that we were on the bridge, and I had been handed the recorder at that moment, so, like, I yeah. was trying to catch some, just, just kind of looking around, just in case something would come up. And... All of a sudden, I saw, like, kind of a dark mass down by my feet. Like, it was pretty large, like, not bigger than a large dog or anything like that. And before I could really process the fact that it was happening and move the camera, it darted away. Like, and then I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I've, one of my biggest regrets is not being able to get that on film. <laughs> I know, I was like, Ashley, you didn't capture that. That's okay. There was, but, like, nothing but, else around to, like, really recreate that. Like, there were no animals. There was no, like, children yeah. that were, that, like, that were that size. There was nobody around me at the time. I think they were the other end of the bridge. <laughs> and, and the thing is, my friend Natalie, well, I was, I was talking at that time, too. I was, I was saying something, and I remember Natalie saying to me, or my friend, she's like, Joe. A dark shadow just went over your head. Remember that, Ash? And she oh, caught right, it on, right. And, and she caught it on film, but she never showed it to me. And unfortunately, I told you she passed away. And I really wish I would have been able to see that film because she caught it. And I'm like, oh. But, yeah, that, that happened. And uh, seeing your breath, we did see our breath one night on the bridge. I remember that. But also that same, that night, I remember feeling a cold breeze on my neck. Uh, Natalie's sister was behind, I thought she was behind me, and I, it felt like somebody was blowing on my neck. And, and I looked, and there was nobody around. It wasn't a windy night. Oh, is that the night that we heard a man? Oh, yes. Tell, tell <laughs> about that. That was weird. So oh, I can't I can't remember if it was a sigh or a grunt, but I know we were walking away from the bridge because we were finishing our investigation for the night, and yes, yes, we just yes. heard something that felt like it was right behind our heads, like yeah, and it I, sounded like a man, and we didn't have a man with us. Yeah, it, well, the thing was is I, we were just standing there staring at the bridge, and I hear oh, like that, and and mm -hmm. Natalie looks at me and she goes. Oh my God, Joe! Did you hear that? And I looked like, Oh my God, what did you hear? Like all of us in the group were just like, What just happened? Like, and we were looking around just to see if it was somebody nearby, but like there was nobody that close to us. And we were the and only there were definitely no men. And no, yeah, there was no men. It was just women. It was just women that night. So that that that's why we figured that there was not just a woman supposedly haunting that bridge. There definitely is a man because with Kaylin seeing that apparition. The um the dark shadow did not seem very feminine. That felt evil being around. It felt because unpleasant. Can, yeah, because I remember when, when Natalie had said that I was I didn't feel comfortable and I was right around with the the specific raster and I always wondered if the real story was that she hung herself because it feels like that was more of the story than going in a river. 
but I don't know. I know there's a few stories going around, so it's really hard to pinpoint what could be the truth. Uh, Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I mean, I know that the person that we were with did claim that she caught, like, the image of, like, a noose or something on the bridge at one point. Yes, that's right. But we never saw that that. either. (laughs) No, but I remember, I remember you mentioning that, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and, and Paul mentioned about scratches uh, on, happening on the bridge. It was on the, the video that I watched of, of uh, your your video that you were in. And I remember seeing that. And I'm like, well, we never got scratched. I think we, I think Natalie was hoping we'd get scratched. But we never did. But I remember that somebody else that worked in another department at the store I worked at, she mentioned she went with her boyfriend to the bridge, they drove on it, went past it a little bit, parked the truck just outside of the bridge, and they were saying some things, I don't know what they were saying, but they I think they pissed off whatever it was, and they they were told, get out, clearly. She says, it was so clear, all they heard was, get out, and they ran to the truck, got in the truck, the boyfriend couldn't start it, it would not start, Truck got scratched. He got out. She went into the place of, of where he would sit for driving, and that's when the car, the truck started up, and they left. It would not start with him, but it would start for her. And I'm like, hmm. I remember that. Yeah, that was freaking weird. When she told me that, I'm like, wow, <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> Real quick, so, that voice that said "get out" was it a female or a male voice that said male. "get out"? It was it a male. male. They said it was clear it was a male. And when we went, we felt more of a male presence than female. I think there is a female presence, but that male was more dominant those times that we went. And it felt it was stronger each time. And I don't know if it's something that the kids did. That's that's what made me wonder. I saw those kids doing some kind of seance. Did they conjure something that we don't know about? You know? Well, I know there's a story about kids using the Ouija board on their seances, so I mean... We saw it. We saw kids doing that before we went on the bridge. At the beginning we were saying that... Right, you did say that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it makes me wonder, like, the kid that you saw, did they close out the Ouija board like you're supposed to, or did they just, like, walk off and not even close it? (laughs) There could be a portal on the bridge that's still open for all we know. Exactly. I heard, I heard that there was a psychic that been on that bridge that said that there's a portal that opens on certain nights. I don't know if it's full moon, but there is a portal on that bridge. That's what they were saying. I don't know if that's fact, though. That's just, you know, what I heard. But I know from what we experienced, which is not the only experience we had on there, because uh, I even had one time uh, that I had gone, I had my camera in my hand. and. Sitting on the edge, you know, where there's like a, a board on the edge of the bridge, it's really low, and I just need to sit in the group a little bit. I thought it was the night that I told you I got blown on the neck, and I sat there, and all of a sudden I feel my hand get hit, but there's nobody by me, and my camera flew out of my hand and took a picture of my feet. And I go, really? What just happened? I forgot about that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go to Ashley, I show her the picture, I go, I took a picture of my feet. <laughs> oh, I tell ya. Well, at least they're comical when we go ghost hunting. <laughs> it's true. But, yeah. I mean, part of it is having fun. You you have to enjoy oh. yourself to be ghost hunting properly. And another time we went with the camera. Remember the battery drain dash? It was like drained. I feel like that happened a couple times. Yeah, it did. It I know my like feeling. snap and shoot camera would usually end up dying. Yep. Yeah, that's a way for them to, you know, get p- powered up for taking the batteries of either, you know, us or off of us or like our electronical devices so they can, mm-hmm. you know, manifest themselves somehow, whether it be, you know, actually seeing an apparition or scratch mm-hmm. marks or something getting thrown. So, I mean, maybe that's what it was they were just trying to drain battery life enough so that you know it could show itself somehow and i'm assuming and i'm assuming 
like when this has happened, you guys had to have had something happen right afterward, whether it be you, you know, like a dark shadow, you guys oh. felt like you were touched or pulled or something. There had to have been something after this. But mm-hmm. actually something did happen. Remember Ashley, the, the uh, wind? I was on the bridge talking to Emily and I, I had asked her, you know, are you sad you're having to wander this bridge? Does it make you angry? Each time I asked a question, I asked three questions. Each time a gust of wind came through the tunnel. It was a calm night. There's no reason for any wind. And I didn't notice it until Ashley brought it up to me. Because we were going to the question, she said, you notice that every time you asked a question, which was three times, the wind gusted through. And it stopped. Mm-hmm. It just did stop. It was still after. That was yeah, because you know how like those summer nights in Vermont, like sometimes like there's not really any wind, and that was one of those nights. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and we don't know where that wind came from. It just gusted right through, right past us. Only when I spoke. No, I get but- it. I mean, Joe, you saw you saw that video. So again, you know, I remember yeah. us. When it was me and two other friends of mine, um, mm-hmm. you know, I was filming on the bridge with the camcorder, and as we're talking about something or being stupid, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I can see my breath. Because all of a sudden, yeah. just like that, it was like a gust of wind or something came in, and that was it. You know, like, it's like, why yeah. are we seeing our breath? So then our friend Dan pulled out his phone to turn on the, the Weather Channel app. And it was telling us it was 61 degrees during the full moon night that we went. So yeah, it was you like, it I saw that yeah. you showed it on your video. Yeah, because I wanted to document degrees. it. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, and I mean, every time we went, it was on a warm summer night. So, like, seeing our breath was really unusual. Yeah, that was really weird. You know, it, it was just odd because it was such a warm night. And then all of a sudden, it's, like, really... Like, where did this come from? It's so cold air. Like, oh, I can't think of anything else. Can you, Ash? I'm trying to think. Um, so many weird things happened. I can't remember everything. Well, real quick, uh, to touch on the sea on our breath. So I just want to put this on the record just in case um, I mm-hmm. never did on one of the other episodes. So I just looked it up because I was kind of curious. Um, so according to my google search of uh, what temperature does it have to be in order to see our breath it has to be below 45 degrees in order to see your breath wow. so crazy. so once again that just goes to show 61 degrees i was seeing my breath that's like you know uh, yeah. like a 21 21 degree different, if not more, because I really, I couldn't tell how cold it was that night. You know what I was really amazed by, by your video, is um, that woman that you were with that got scratched, which is unusual, because that's not how the story goes. Exactly. They say, it's the men. they say the men is always the one that get targeted because she's angry at, the, at men, because they remind her of her jilted lover. So I thought it was kind of odd that she would get scratched, and you guys did not. I did. Yeah, that's right. You did. But the other guy didn't, right? No. No, he's the only one that did not get scratched. But I kind of asked for it. When when our friend Kelly got sort of scratched, like I say sort of is because you can see something was trying to dig at her leg. But it mm-hmm. wasn't as deep as my marks were. But that was because... You know, just like you just said, you know, that's so weird because normally scratches only happen on males. So that's yeah. when I kind of got upset because I was just like, you know what? What did she do? You know, so at this point in time, I was kind of uh, provoking. But I was just like, what are you going to do? You're going to scratch me? You think you're big and tough? So come on, scratch me. Like, what does she do? And next thing I know, I got scratched. But the weird thing about me getting scratched is I could not feel it until i actually got home wow so what it i mean how did you feel like physically other than like you say you couldn't feel pain but i mean did you feel like you were um 
I, I see where you're going. Yeah, yeah, you I know, like, did you have a sensation of some kind? Like, you Like you brushed like up against head? something like a plant. I did not. Yeah, yeah. I made, that was one thing everybody says. I said, you must have brushed up something on the bridge. I perfectly did not lean on the bridge just for that reason. <laughs> I did not lean up on it. I didn't do anything. As I had to lean back for a minute, I walked out of the bridge and I went to uh, my friend's vehicle just so I could, like, you know, stretch out for a minute or sit down in the car or something. But that was it. Otherwise, I never leaned back on the bridge. But, um... Well, that's not where I was going with this. I was going with, like, when, when a spirit gets invasive, like, does it, like, affect your soul? You know, does it like make you feel violated? Well, uh, yeah, you know? I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say I always felt violated. I just felt like, you know, just like, um, I I guess I was more like annoyed that she was getting scratched for no reason. Like I had no mm-hmm. idea why she she ended up getting like that little white scratch whatever happened feeling because she did say her leg was burning so it makes me wonder if she instead of getting scratched like you know and this happened almost 11 years ago on july 3rd but um does she think that she been like was getting warned so i almost wonder if it was just one of those weird attempts of trying to get touch but for some reason the touch felt like it was a burn mark per se like like it was an evil entity that had that ability to make it feel like by touching it was burning which you kind of hear that sometimes mm-hmm. that's a, yeah that sounds valid because that, that's something you really it just makes me wonder like why do these things actually happen and why does it not happen to everyone these experiences but it happens you know to people like us I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. they probably yeah. know who's more sensitive and who might be receptive to them. Oh, they definitely do. Or in some cases, they are angry at somebody. Well, provoking does not help. That's for sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I um, watching that ghost hunter shows, you know, not to provoke unless you're Zach Bagan. <laughs> the only way yeah. I provoke is I'm really trying to document something, but that's it. Mm-hmm. So in this yeah. case. It was me trying to provoke because of the stories of, you know, males are supposed to get scratched. So, of course, I was like, why did you scratch hers? In that case, scratch me. Let's see your big mm-hmm. and bad bones, you know. And next thing you know, I, was, uh, I got scratched not once, but twice. But So, the image, I don't think that you saw, Joe, on that video sh- showed all of it. But I literally got scratched like somebody, like, like think of, like, cats. Like when they go and you'd like a cat scratcher, you know how they their paws yep. one is a little bit higher than the other paw, and then yeah, they mm-hmm. like rake down. That's basically how what my scratcher looked like on my back. Was it three scratches? Uh, it was four. Well, okay. I was wondering because a lot of the times, if it's three scratches, they say it's demonic or something or correct evil. Yeah, because they say in threes. Things happen in three just you gotta be careful. Yeah, and it was out, not three. Three jagged rocks, three times the wind blows. Gee, you think I would have thought of those things like this? Right. <laughs> Everything's in threes. Oh, that reminds me of another experience on there. So, um, do you remember Ashley when Natalie brought her brother in law? Yes. And and she wanted him to come because she wanted to see if the if the room yeah, because we wanted to see if that was, was like, stretch. yeah, we wanted to see what? if there would be a rela- reaction because he's a man. Mm. Yeah, she didn't tell him. She just said, go on the bridge. Oh, <laughs> she nice. didn't want to tell. Yeah, she was, she was, I'm using him as a guinea pig. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> he didn't get scratched, though, but she told me, take pictures. So I was taking pictures, and one picture I caught, it was an unusual orb. It wasn't circular. It was kind of oval a little bit, huh, Ash? Mm-hmm. I think I should. Yeah, and, it, and it, if you look carefully at it, because I pulled it up on my computer at the time, and it had a, a woman's face on there, 
but my my mom noticed that there was a it looked like she was holding a baby. Hmm. Yeah. She could see it in the orb. And it was not like a, a white orb, it was colored. It had like fleshy color. It was really weird. I've never seen anything like it. Because all the other orbs that we had on the on the uh, bridge, they were, you pull it up, you could see wings and stuff because it's bugs. But hmm. that was one that stood out. I wish I could find that picture. Man, bugs me. I think I might have it around somewhere. If I do, I promise you I will send it to you. That's but it was just, it just, it was just so unusual. It wasn't like perfectly round. Hmm. I was so excited that I caught that. <laughs> yeah, that you know when it's over... stuffed, it's definitely round. <laughs> yeah, and and the thing and that is was that not. It was the only time I caught anything like that, and it was when her brother-in-law was on the bridge, and I was taking pictures of him, and it was right around him. But nothing happened to him. Too bad, because we were hoping. <laughs> Probably because he, he didn't... Did he not interact with the uh, spirit at all? Did he no. just kind of just walk on the bridge, kind of like casually walking, walk. not saying anything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. why. Yeah, because yeah. he, he didn't know he was being a guinea pig. <laughs> In fact, he was like yelling out, just to say, hey, get Jim. <laughs> hmm. That's awful. That's awful. But <laughs> I, I Too just bad. remember that. I just remember that at all. Too bad they they didn't say anything else. Like you know, when you go on that bridge, make sure you say like "Hi, hello," and then just keep walking or something, or be like "Hey, what's going on today?" Know, you know. Right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> if you didn't do that, that was. Yeah, remember this was back in two thousand seven. Ghost hunters was a, a real long time, and her and I, and Ash was like my paranormal junkie buddy at least at the time we used to watch a lot of it so we all had you know something in common that's why we decided to do this together but um yeah you, you kind of learn things like for one thing always have an extra battery oh yeah, you, this yeah is true. Backup battery. and always keep it in the car away from you <laughs> <laughs> yeah <that's true. laughs> yeah and i don't even think we even had a flashlight <laughs> We were just so not prepared for that. Today would be so different. Well, I mean, when your eyes adjust to the dark, then you, you can see fairly well. <laughs> yeah, and there's also lights there, too. I don't know, Paul, if you notice that there's, there's street lights around. Uh, yeah. When we went, there was not any street lights on. There was literally just the moonlight and the headlight of the car that we used. We had traffic. Um, <laughs> I think there was, there was one traffic. Ton. One car. Well, it was one thirty in the morning, and the car actually passed through. We forgot it was an active bridge. Yeah. And then she waved at us. Always fun pushing up against the side of the bridge to let the car go through. <laughs> yeah, and, and the cops coming through too. What are you guys doing here? Luckily, we didn't have any cop that night when we were there. So we did um, every single time. Our friend actually went to the town to tell them that we were going to be there, but they still. Drove through around one o'clock in the morning. And like, you know, what are you folks doing here? Don't make too much noise. So remember, if anybody's listening to this podcast, when you go to Emily's Bridge, be respectful. If a cop comes by, just tell them that you'll be quiet and you're paranormal investigating. They'll be cool with it. They don't care about that part. Although, did you notice, Paul, that the last time you went, that there's a municipality thing over by the dirt pit that you can't park there between certain hours? Um, there was no sign that said that. Well, they do. They do now. It says per municipality, you're not allowed to park there. That's so weird because I just went this past Sunday and I didn't see any signs. Well, they might have taken it down then. Well, it's good because the last time we went, which is about was a few years ago, they actually had a little sign, a, a, a town sign that said the per selectman. There's no parking between the hours of six, uh, 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. Right yeah, now, the f- dirt before the bridge, they, so they took it down finally. Well, because they realized people want to go see this bridge. <laughs> well, I know, I know for a while, Stowe, uh, the, the town Stowe did try to find people that were going to that bridge because of the fact that they were too noisy 
and rowdy and keeping yeah. the neighbors up at night. So, but from what I heard when I was asking somebody how much the fine was, it was only a twenty-five dollar fine. So what? What is that? Like what? Like what kind of fine is that? That's true. Yeah, it's not much of a deterrent. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I said it to my friend the other time, too. I said, 25 bucks for the find? I mean, I'd I'd go there just to get fined for 25 bucks. Like, it would be worth it to me. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, so we were it's talking like paying for a natural attraction anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, that's how much gas probably was to fill up the car back in the day anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But, okay. Um, so, just to wrap it up then. So, is that pretty much everything that you guys remember is there anything else that you feel you need to mention before i move on to the next question no, i don't I think, think i have good. anything yeah, so neither. so i guess um you know this can go for both of you ladies so uh ashley we'll start with you you know you've kind of been quiet let's give your mother a break for a minute so what is one of your spook what is one of your favorite spooky tale within Vermont? Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, I don't know a ton of them. Obviously, I know Emily's Bridge, and I learned the most about that one. I know that there was an old McDonald's. I don't remember what it is now. I think it's a tap house or something in Burlington that was haunted and in the basement. The like, yeah. What? From the ghost you probably book. remember it better than I do. <laughs> I don't re- See, my thing is, my memory stinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with getting um, over. You uh, see, Joe. a lot of the things, I know that they're haunted. I just don't always know the story behind them. Mm. Like, I know the Dutton House and the Shelburne Museum is haunted, and I've actually had, a, oh, like, gosh. an experience there in the middle of the yeah, day. we both did. Yeah, both of us did. We both Because I remember did. going up to the second floor of that building, and when we got there, like, all the beds were neatly made because they're, like, behind a barrier, and you don't go past that. And then, like, I walked over to one of the other rooms, and then when I went to turn back to the first room I saw the bed was all disheveled, like somebody had been sitting on it. But we were the only ones in the house and up in the top floor at the time. Yeah, just me and you. Dad and Jonathan were downstairs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I asked the person downstairs if it was haunted because it felt heavy going up the stairs. I don't know about you, Ashley, but my legs felt heavy going up the stairs. Oh, definitely. And it felt like we were being watched, like somebody was watching us. And it's funny that we went around and then when we came back through, all the beds were disheveled, like she said. It was impressions of somebody sitting on each bed. And it's like, how is that possible? And then the lady downstairs told us that the, sometimes the picture frame comes out of whack, too. And they have to keep straightening it out. So, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't know the story behind that, but it's definitely haunted. But And... It depends on the employee that you ask about it, because I feel like, to some extent, they don't want to believe it's haunted, or they don't want to yeah. encourage people to want to go ghost hunting in the museum and such like that. Yeah, they don't want to ruin their reputation. Mm-hmm. And you don't want damage done to an old house, either. You're right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Joe, uh, do you have a yeah. favorite story from uh, Vermont besides Emily Bridge? Is there another one that you like? There was a murder, I guess, over at uh, Maple Street Park in Essex Junction. Uh, it, I don't know what year it happened. I only heard bits of this story, but apparently these uh, young girls were being followed in the woods over by the park, and they were, and uh, one of them was murdered. And me and my husband actually went to the park because we wanted to test the theory if she still haunts that place. And so we brought our K2 meter because we got one now. <laughs> and this was just a few years back. And I told my husband, I said, maybe we could see if we can contact the theory. And um, 
I didn't know the name. Oh, I think I found out the name at the time, but I can't remember now. You know, but anyway, um, I remember uh, asking her if she was following us, and my husband said his hand was getting so cold, and it felt like something was gripping his hand. And I think she was like attached to him, like wanting to walk with him. He wasn't scared or anything. He says it was it felt like a child holding on to his hand. And so we just, and, it, and the funny part was, is in the woods, in that, in that trail by the park, it was, there was no sounds of any bugs. It was like dead quiet, which is unusual because usually you hear a little everything's in the summertime. And there was this dead silence in that one spot. Like, it was like a little stretch, dead silent. And then uh, I told Perry, I says, my husband, I says, hey, Tell the spirit to stay here. Don't follow us home because <laughs> I don't want nothing following us home. And um, then he said all of a sudden the feeling just went away. The coldness went away. The hand feeling went away. It, so that was an experience that I had <clears throat> just local here in my home. Um, I also heard some stories. Um, let's see. Let's see. I hear stories. Oh, the Flynn. I would love to go to the Flynn sometime. They say that, it, I don't know if you heard of that story, Paul, about the Flynn, where they have, like, the, the guy that used to work in the Flynn. He was up in the rafters. and uh, Yeah, like adjusting the lights. Yeah, and he fell to his death. They say that they see his spirit floating around up there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I know the story behind it is also that, like, he wants to protect people from meeting that same fate. At least that, what, yep. that's what people like to believe. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that does sound familiar to me. But mm-hmm. there's a, another place, too, that like to watch people at a, um, like a opera house or something. He liked to watch the actors, and he liked to watch the people setting the stage up for the fact of hopefully not meeting their, their doom like they did or something like that. So unless it's the same place. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's probably I think I have heard of another place. that. So you're probably right. Oh, you know what? Another cool place would be to go is Glastonbury. Because they said a lot of paranormal stuff happens out there. From Bigfoot to people disappearing. That's right. They, they said a hiker actually went up there and never came back. They never found her. And then they found a man crushed in the rocks, thinking that it may have been a Sasquatch. You, you must have heard that story in Glastonbury. Oh, yes. It's very, yeah, it's very paranormal up there. I would love to go up there just, just to see. These yeah, they call that there. the Bennington Triangle, which was yes, uh, dubbed by do. that. Which they dubbed that by, uh, that was dubbed by Joseph Citro, actually. I heard about that. I actually got a book on that. Uh, Passing Strange. I, hmm? I want to say. The Passing Strange by Joseph Jose Citro, I think, is where he oh, talked about that. I haven't saw it in that book. I, I have like a book like Haunted Vermont, and I've got other books of uh, Vermont that I, I can't remember the name of it, but I have uh, The Haunted Guide to Vermont. I have that. Which has a oh, the there, so Vermont like Ghost Guide, it. probably. Yeah, yeah, I have that one. Uh, do you have the the updated one or the original, like like small pocket one, like like you could literally shove it in your pocket? <laughs> I can't shove this one in my pocket. It's a little bit bigger. It's not super huge. It's only like a probably like a five five by uh, four by six. Uh, not very big, small. Yeah, it sounds okay. sound like that small one. Does it have Emily's Bridge on the cover? Yes. Okay, yeah, it's uh, that's the original one. Uh, Joseph oh. Citro actually did uh, an updated version of the Vermont Ghost Guide with his pal Robert Brunel Jr., which you can buy off of uh, Amazon because um, it's been hard for them to get their books nowadays to get sold in local bookshops for some reason. Some bookshops mm-hmm. are selling their books, but um, usually if you ask them about where to get their books, you're usually getting told to go on Amazon, unfortunately. Really? 
Mm -hmm. Wow. What um, about mine at a bookstore? I, I like to go to bookstores. In fact, uh, remember when they used to have Barnes & Noble here in Burlington is when we would go get some ghost books. And, uh, of course, they have um, – not Barnes – is it Barnes & Noble? No. It's um, – is it down by Church Street? Yeah. Uh, Crow Books? No, not there. Although that was a good one, too. That one, that one reminds me of Black Books, the comedy, the British comedy. Hmm. It's a little bookstore. That's, it's a funny comedy. But well, anyways, yeah. that's what it reminds me of. Uh, they, they have some really good old books in there, but there was uh, another place that they used to have. I can't remember the name of but they close it because, you know, they do. Oh, yeah. But, uh, they usually do. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, sometimes if you go to different states and stuff, like if, when I go to Maine, if I go somewhere mm -hmm. to, like, a little shop, I'll find, like, uh, some haunted books even from there because I like watching and uh, reading about hauntings and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. I was just oh, looking oh, up I, stuff I, for Maine. <laughs> I was just like, I want to know what's going on in Maine. A lot goes on in Maine. Oh, yes. Especially at the White Houses. The White Houses, and also there's a haunted road out there, too. I heard about that. Not, yeah. But if you go on the hilltop, there's a spirit that walks that road that lights up. I, I can't remember the whole thing. I have it in my book. I have to look it up again. Yeah, when, when I you look it up. I guess a conversation sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, just send it my way on that on that uh note too, because I'm kind of curious now of whatever road this is. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of books. I can always send you a picture of the books that I have from Vermont and stuff like that. But um. Well, uh, I have Theo Lewis's books too, because Theo Lewis. Uh, I well, I used to love to go to the Queen City Ghost Walks because she tells great stories and she has a bunch of books. And so my husband kept buying me the books. I'm like, oh my god, these are great stories. <laughs> I actually had her on the podcast last year too. Did you really? Because she signed my book over at Costco once. <laughs> like, oh, so cool. Yeah, and she's really nice. She, she really. Oh, she really talk. is. Oh yes. She's very chill. I love yeah, how I'm... she dresses up for a Queen City Ghost Walk. Cause she. Yeah, you know, she puts the black veil on. She has her lantern, and she's amazing. Yeah, she's, she's uh, she's uh, she's basically representing the 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 you know the the atmosphere. I guess I don't even know the right term that I want to use, but yeah, <laughs> like eventually, I would love to get her back on because I feel like we could have talked for probably another hour than what we were able to. So. Um, but yeah, I, I I know she's coming out with a new book. So shout out to Cia Lewis real quick. She's gonna be coming out with a new true crimes book again. Uh, I believe she said something like September twenty fifth this year. So oh, great. stay tuned for that. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. So real quick, uh, Ashley, uh, I know your mother's been kind of throwing locations out of where she would like to go. Is there any location? that come to your mind that you would love to go and investigate? Uh, yeah, that's tough. I, I don't have any on the top of my head. <laughs> well, you did get to go to Alcatraz. What was that like? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> it <laughs> felt very weird. It was kind of unsettling. Nothing really happened there, but I have been to Alcatraz. <laughs> I That's took a lot of true. pictures just to see if I could catch anything. That's my girl. <laughs> I think see, great. there's plenty of places I've been. I just don't know of places that I haven't been that I would want to go to yet. <laughs> okay, well, let me rephrase. I've been a little out of practice it. on the ghost hunting. <laughs> oh, I have been, too. Uh, so let me re reword that. If you could reinvestigate a place, what would you choose? Hmm. I don't know. Like, even though I know that I couldn't, I would really like to know more about the Dutton house and, like, be able to explore it, like, at night. Yeah. DVTs at night. Like, I don't know if there's any information on, like, who could have died there and what's keeping them there. But, like, 
that was just a really neat place. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's a shame that we can't really do much with that place anymore. But I know there's a video floating around about the 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 Dutton House somewhere. I think I might even have one. So so I'll have to send it to your mother, <laughs> so she can send know, it like, to you. I also have an interest in like just like abandoned towns and such. That like I know cool. there's a few of them in Vermont. I went mm -hmm. to one near Danville. That was. It was pretty cool just walking around and learning its history. I don't you know, know if it's haunted. Me... I couldn't find anything about that, though. I just thought of a place that would be cool to go. Devil's Bowl. Where the pig man is. The Devil's Bowl. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. That, yeah, that's over in, uh, where is it? Uh, Northfield. Northfield, yeah. Yeah. That would be a place to investigate at night. Hmm. Just don't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> you find a pigman? Yeah, about a pigman. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to take my chances on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to either. I but all right, ladies. Um, you know, I don't want to keep you anymore. Uh, you know, I think just hour long chat or so is about about right to to say I think we're done here. But I mean, thank you so much for your time, ladies. Um, Joe, Ashley, it was a pleasure. Uh, if you guys ever think of any other experiences as well, um, pre mm -hmm. feel free to reach out again if you'd like to talk and share some more. Oh, that would be great. Thank and you for having us have... on your podcast. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. And for Anybody the listeners, right? yeah. And for the listeners out there, you know, if you have a story to tell, please reach out to me because I would love to hear it. I'd like to collect more stories and experiences, just like Joe and Ashley here. They were nice enough to come on, even though they were nervous at first. But you know what? Um, you know, why not? I mean, you know, we're, as Joe will put it, we're a bunch of paranormal junkies. So why not just <laughs> talk all paranormal? I mean, why not? But until that, it really is. And until yeah. next time, be careful because keep your eyes open because you just never know if an apparition.